Uh, this morning, you've got your Bibles. Go with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 20. We're going to uh, read verses 1 through 9. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. Here the Bible says, Now when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemy. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be terrified, or do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. Then the officers shall speak to the people, saying, What man is there who has built a new house and has not dedicated? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. Also, what man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man marry her. The officers shall speak further to the people and say, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. And so it shall be when the officers have finished speaking to the people that they shall make captives of the armies to lead the people. Let us stop there for a moment. Before I get into this, as you know, amen, there is a war in Ukraine and I know like the news has kind of calmed down from it, but how many know there's still a serious and intense battle going on over there? And I was reading about uh, ministries in that country I was reading about a, I can't, I'm not even going to try and pronounce their names, amen, because you know they're very hard to pronounce. Uh, but there was a, a small business owner who had a passion for God, and uh, he had planted a church there in Ukraine. But obviously him and his family had to flee the war zone, and uh, he wanted to return back home, but obviously he couldn't, not yet. So he uprooted, and he left his home, and he got close to Kiev, which is the capital of Ukraine, right? And when he did, he ended up planting a new church in Kiev for all those, amen, that were displaced by the war. And in fact, he named his new church God's Design Church. And I read about another man, and he was a Baptist, and he was a Baptist preacher. Uh, he was deeply moved by obviously what's going on in his country. And what he did, he, uh, him and his church got together and picked up an offering and pledges to buy a vehicle because he heard that many soldiers were dying in the front lines and there was not transportation to get them to hospitals, okay? So what they did, the church came together and they invested in a vehicle and they, hey, how'd you like to have that ministry? Hey, by the way, you're going to the front lines, you're gonna be transporting uh, soldiers to hospitals, huh? And they, 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 what they did, they, they got the vehicle, they went to the front lines and they're transporting these men to hospitals that way they would live, okay? And they also took Bibles with them. And, and they said, you know what? We're going to help them physically with the hospital, but also spiritually, we're going to give them the Word of God, okay? I was reading about another man who rose up as a chaplain, and he decided to join the army and become a chaplain. And he was greatly moved because the church uh, in that city where he was sent, uh, they, the church came together and picked up an offering for him just to, for him to get a bulletproof vest. And he was moved by that. Now, you're probably wondering, you know, what's, you know, that's over there, right? Okay. That's their plight. But, you know, these are normal men and women. Every day, just like you. They go to school. They were going to school. They're going to their jobs. They're going to church. They were with their families. They're just in a different country. They are in a literal battle. Come on. And here in America, we might think, well, we, we are kind of, we are a blessed nation, 
Say amen, church. Uh, we got it made, if I can use that word. But if you see the battles coming closer to our lives, you see what's going on in our world. There was a shooting in Orange County. Uh, a man went into a church, an Asian church, Christian Asian church, and he, sh and he killed an individual there, right? Uh, we see what happened, just the shootings, that young man that he had mental issues, he went and killed 10 people in Buffalo, New York, right? So we might be wondering, you know, well, then what happened here? No, let me tell you something. Anybody that's using drugs, that has mental instability, it can happen any day. Our church in Gilroy, when Pastor Ray was there, you know, he had a man come in and, and shoot up the place and they tackled him and all because he, he was going to shoot Pastor Ray, our pastor. He was going to, you know, take him out. And fortunately, Pastor Ray was there. He was in our conference down in Oxnard. So uh, he, that man did not know that. So it, it's, we are in a battle. That's my whole point this morning. You know, the Bible talks about Ephesians in chapter 6, verse 12, that, you know, we, are, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Did you know there's a war right now as we speak going on in the heavenlies and it's a battle over your soul? Right? If you had an attack this morning, it seemed like, you know, hell unleashed every demon to not get you to come to church. All right. Your soul was at stake. Come on, you ever notice that that happens only on church days? If you're going to Disneyland, everything is just smooth except for her mouth that she goes, you know, hurry up, you know, you, you forgot this, you got that. But for the most part, you know, everything's smooth. But when it comes to the spiritual things, isn't there always some type of attack for the most part? Your car don't start. You run out of gas. She has an attitude. He's being lazy. Come on, these are attacks. Okay. Now, not only are we in a battle with the enemy over our soul, but how many know that within us there's a battle? The flesh versus the spirit. The spiritual versus the carnal. The Bible talks about that in Galatians 5 verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So there is a battle within us. Come on now. You look spiritual. You look all saintly today. But how many know within a drop of the dime, we, become, we can become the most carnal, most evil person. Just like that. Huh? Things will come out of our mouths, amen, that we would never thought of. Okay. So there, there's, there's a battle going on. But unfortunately, there are people throughout our nation in general whose biggest battle today was simply trying to get to church. If you're battling just to come, just to, if you're forcing yourself just to come to the house of God, Houston, we got a problem. Hello? Because if we are born again, if we have the spirit of Christ in us, the obvious would be that we would want to be in the presence of God, that we want to be in his house, that we would desire to hear his word for our lives. That we would desire to seek his will for our lives. So coming to the church should not even be a battle. Hello? It should not be something that you must... Ah, oh, man, I got nothing. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not standing up here as one that is just... Oh, my God. I'm just... I just love to come to church and just fellowship with all the saints. And I never battle against it. No, there are times where I just... Man, I'm tired. I'm just tired. You know, I don't want... Oh, man... Especially you wake up in the morning, you turn on TV for a minute, you drink your five gallons of coffee, and there's a good movie, and all of a sudden, man, that movie hasn't came on a long time. And that was Sunday, right before church, right? Hmm? You know. <laughs> but the battles, that should, this should not be a battle to come to church. Even though we will fight, then you'll attack. I'm talking about the personal desire to be in the house of God. If, if there's not a desire, you have to battle that, all right, this, then more likely, you are out of the battle. I don't know if you understand that. See, we are soldiers in the kingdom of God. When you give your life to Jesus, the fight begins. Okay? But this morning, I want to ask you, what type of soldier are you? Okay. 
There are some who are in the front lines, like these men that I mentioned right here in Ukraine, you know, that they are literally in the front line. There, you know, there are some in our churches, they're, they're fighting with passion and devotion. You are in the front lines, you're involved in ministry, you're involved in the support of the church financially, you're involved in every uh, outreach, you're involved, amen, in every aspect, and all that you can do, you are in the front lines battling. And that's commendable. And thank God for people that are on the front lines, okay? But there are some soldiers who have fallen back. Maybe they've fallen back in the battlefield. They're still fighting, but they're not on the front lines. Come on. There are some in, the, in our churches that are wounded and they're afraid to return to the front line. Because how many know we come into the house of God wounded at times, if not all the time? We are wounded, amen, from maybe a past church experience, hopefully not this one, okay? Maybe from another church, you got wounded, you got hurt from a, a, a former pastor, congregation, I don't know, a brother or sister in that church, or even in our church. Come on, we ain't the perfect church. It ain't perfect because you walked in. And I walked in, get it? But maybe, you're, you know, some have, are wounded and they really don't want to get involved. They just, you know, I don't want to go to the front lines. I'm happy sitting in my little corner, amen, in my little part of the pew, amen. Just me and Jesus right here. Because me and Jesus got a good thing going on. I don't want to rock the boat. Come on. There are some amen that have lost the desire and will to fight and have given up. They just given up. They did a Roberto Duran. No mas. Remember that? They got hit. They got attacked. Come on. Uh, and uh, you lose a desire because of neglect. Because of carelessness, because of slothfulness, uh, we become amen, indifferent and apathetic, and we lose the desire, amen, for the things of God, and we just don't fight anymore. Come on. There are some in the house of God who have intentions. They've enlisted into God's army, but for whatever reason, they haven't laced up their boots, amen, and are ready to battle. They, got, they heard a message and, and, and they got stirred up, but they didn't follow through with those intentions and God speak to them and, and God stirred their heart up and, and they left the church, amen, ready to go into the battle, but reality kind of said, you know, I think I just, I'm going to wait. And finally, there's some, amen, who have retreated so far back from the front lines and now they're fighting for the other side come on now let me get to the the crew of the message this morning i believe one of the biggest reasons that christians are not fighting the good fight is because they have become distracted hello distract we are people that are so prone to distraction i've noticed that we're in the house of God, okay? And we can be distracted by so many things. A person gets up, walks to the bathroom. Oh my God, they're going to the bathroom. <laughs> What's going on there? They're going to the bathroom. That's my sister going to the bathroom, by the way. It's back there. Huh? What's going on? They got to go to the bathroom. You see that couple up there? How come she keeps elbowing, elbowing him? Distractions. What does distraction mean? It means your attention is drawn away by other things. Okay. And we are a fly, a bee can fly in here, and you'll be distracted by a bee. And God can be speaking to your heart. Some of you, amen, mind not even here right now. Well, yes, it is. You're yelling at me. <laughs> but I have to keep your attention. On. Distraction means your attention is drawn away by other things. And more than likely, nine times out of ten, is drawn away by other things that are of less significance or importance. You know, my wife, man, when she wants to talk to me and talk serious matters, is usually when I don't want to talk. Usually when I'm watching 
a good movie. I was like, she wants to talk, <laughs> right? And I'm listening to her, and I'm like looking at her, but I'm looking like, you know, you, you, man, you don't do it, huh? We, we look at her, then we look at the TV, like we look like a chameleon with our eyes going both ways like that. Uh, and she and she knows, they know, brothers, that that our mind is somewhere else, usually on that. But my wife will tell me, Eddie, where's your mind at? What's distracting you, Eddie? Nothing. But he done like, you? No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I want to talk about this morning distractions on the battlefield. Because every and each and one of us, amen, should be fighting the good fight of faith this morning. Well, I'm new. I'm not really spiritual. Okay. Let me tell you something. It, then they get spiritual. Give your life to Jesus. Enlist in the army of God. It'll be the greatest thing you've ever done in your life. It'll be more meaningful, amen, than anything you can do in society. Now, don't get me wrong. There's great things you can do in society. You can do all these good things and all that. But I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm talking about eternity, your eternity. I'm talking about the effect your life, amen, can have on others around you. But you must join the battle and become a soldier of Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, that's for the man. No, no, let me tell you something. I'm starting to see now in our church that women, hello, are lacing up their boots. And they, amen, are picking up their, their guns. Come on. Is that, a, is that a rebuke to us men? I think so. Come on. Mm -hmm. So this morning, we're, I want to talk briefly about some things that distract us. Now, in this portion of scripture, it's about battling your enemies. Verse 1 says, when you go out to battle against your enemies, you're going to see all the, the horses and chariots. They're going to be more numerous than you, but don't trip. All right, I got you. I'm the Lord God who brought you out of Egypt. And, and I made a mighty miracle when I got you out of Egypt, when I delivered you from drugs, alcohol, and sin. So you know what? If I can do that miracle, trust me, amen, I can give you victory over every and any enemy in your life. Okay, so here the Bible talks about people that went out that they're, they're going to go to battle, but they made a decision like, you know what, you better not go because you're too distracted. Okay, verse 5 says, Then the officer shall speak to the people, saying, What man is there who has built a new house? And has not dedicated. Let him go and return to his house. Lest he die in battle. And another man dedicated. What are the distractions this morning? Some are distracted by. As verse 5 talks about. Their possessions. Here's a man. In verse 5. He built a new home. He hadn't had a chance to move in yet. This battle began. All right. But the Bible says here, you know what? He is, he's building his house. It's just about done. He hasn't even had a chance to dedicate it. You know what? Tell him to go home because he's going to be distracted about the new countertops, about the granite, the tile. Come on. About the furnishings. He's going to be distracted about, I need to paint that wall. I need to get the landscape going. For you that ever had a, own a house, I mean, no, there's a lot going on when you buy a house, right? And if it's a fixer-upper, oh my God, don't take your whole church. Hey, I bought a fixer-upper as a pastor and this building. And we had to fix up that house and this and still maintain my ministry. Amen. By the grace of God, amen. I was, a little, and I was a lot younger back then. You know what? I did not let it neglect this. All right? But it was God fighting with me and, and a lot of good help. Come on. A lot of men and women that were in the front lines and helped us. Rebuild this church and remodel it and, and support it financially. It took a lot, amen? amen. So I know about distractions. There was times where, man, you know what? Oh, man, you know what? I got to be over there. I still got to fix that because I bought a fixer upper and I need to do this and this and that. And, but some people are distracted by their possessions right now. Come on. Maybe it's a house, that big old honeydew loose, and unfortunately, you know, honeydew list. Honey, do this. Honey, do that. And all you do is look at it. And it's come to the point where she's framed it and put it on the wall. 
It's a vision wall, you know, vision, the vision wall where things you desire to happen one day. I was telling my wife yesterday in my in my office, uh, I have a my switch, a light switch, is a round one, and to push one, then you can, you know, you can lower the lighting, you know, the fader, and it's broken. So every time I press on it, the the, the button, the, it comes off and falls on the floor. It makes a lot of noise. Here is a man that remodels house. I can't do it. Big, I don't need your part. I don't need your help right now. Okay. I remodel houses. I fix everybody else's mess. Hello? Okay. And I cannot simply fix one button on a switch. In fact, I probably have to call Julie and come do it. And all it takes they made is about it's about three minutes to fix. Why? I'm distracted from it. It's not a priority. Something else is on my mind. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. But how many know we can have possessions can be a great distraction? Your new car, oh. you know, it's, and it's Sunday, and man, you know, it's a beautiful day to go to the beach. It's a beautiful day to go for a ride. Well, nobody's going for a ride no more because of yeah, the gas. At least go around the block or something. But how many know it seems like the plans are always on Sunday between 11 and 2. Isn't that amazing to me? Hmm. So this person in our text, he was distracted by his possession, his home. And the Bible says, you know what? Excuse him from battle because he's not going to be any good to us. Right? Instead of looking out, you know, eh, for the enemy being on guard, eh, man, he's going to be on his phone, eh, man, looking at Pinterest and Etsy and, and furnishings for his house and, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot. Get it? His heart wasn't there. And like I said before, I don't stand up here as one that, oh, I'm so spiritual that when I walk, actually, if I, if I was to walk, go that way, I would float. There have been times in my life, spiritually and in ministry, where my heart wasn't here. You say amen, like. Where it's not that I don't love Jesus, I don't love ministry, I'm grateful for what God has done in my life. It's not because of that. It's because my mind and my heart was somewhere else. So, some are distracted simply by their possession. Yeah. And a lot, especially now, there's so much out there that you and I can obtain. Come on. Man, there's so, man, there's so much stuff out there, right? I mean, I mean, technology, phones, and computers, and I mean, the, the cars. The way, I mean, there's so much that you and I can just get involved in. The Bible says, what, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The heart means your mind. Come on. Especially now, the weather, come on, for May, the weather has been good for May. It's not, it's not hot. Yeah, we had a hot one or two days that were hot. Man, the weather's nice, isn't it? Man, it's almost like beach weather. The, the weather's nice. Been working Monday through Saturday. And man, you know what? Oh man, I just need a day to myself. I need some me time. You know what? My babies, they haven't been nowhere with me. Yeah. The weather's been perfectly. The fish are biting. Kids want to go to the park. Man, there's work to do in the yard. The cars need to be washed. The cars. Remember, we didn't even have a car. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with these things, but how many keep you out of church? Not today. Thank God you're here today. But how about last week? How about two weeks ago? What distracted you from coming to the house of God? And let's get more. Let's not really. Talk, let's get a little bit more deeper. I'm talking about the spiritual things. What has distracted you from prayer daily? The reading of your word. Nowadays, you don't even have to have a Bible. There are a million and one apps you can put on your phone. They will even give you a reminder of the quote and the scripture for the day. You don't have to do nothing but just sit there. I just found out two days ago, and correct me, I'm not a technology guy. You know, on my iPhone, you press a button, you'll say, hey, call so-and-so, right? You know, the iPhone. 
I didn't know. I, I didn't even have to press that button. I could have said, hey, series. Hey, series. Anybody got a phone on? It'll go on right now. I did that one time, and then all of a sudden it falls. Why get your phone on right now? Well, I'll just give it mercy. Are you a, a heart doctor or brain surgeon? Are you an FBI agent that's on call? What's so bad? Trust me, turn it off because it's just, it's just, it, it, it's just your, your family member wanting some money and eating a ride. I need you here. The other day, I was watching my grandkids, my grand, first time in a long time. My wife wasn't there. They dropped them off early. So I watched two, a two-year-old, the one and two. I said, oh God. I told y'all, just come home already. Just tell me you got your sick. Just come home. Just gonna get off early. Who cares? That that old person will be all right because you work with the elderly. He'll be all right. Put him to sleep. Give him some nightfall. Give him a pill. I need you, Eddie. I'll be there. I'll be there. Just, I'll be there at six thirty. God. So about thirty minutes. Things are going good. I'm playing with them. And got toys. It's going. We got McDonald's. It's on. But then I smell something. <laughs> 911, one of these kids is pooped. You didn't come home now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, so I don't know why I talk about that, but <laughs> talking about kids. Now, there's nothing wrong with these things, okay? Being with our children, being with family, and possessions, and it's nice things we got, amen. But how many know they will hinder and distract us? All right, for those things, amen, that are more important than anything, that is the spirituality of our lives and also the kingdom of God and being a witness for Christ. Come on. How many of these, these distract you and hinder you from prayer and the reading of the word, amen? Because how many know we are busy people now? You, you rush your kids, amen, to sports, to events, to ballet, karate. Come on. All of a sudden, parents are like, ballet? There's no ballet in the hood. All of a sudden, you're in ballet? Excuse me? Come on. So many people give their kids everything under the sun, don't they? They provide them what they need and give them what they want. They seem to have it all. But the sad fact is that many fail to share with their children the most precious gift they could ever receive, and that is Jesus Christ and the spiritual things. Hmm? We are distracted, amen, with all those things where we neglect the most important things for their lives, and that is Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with kids going to sports. There's nothing wrong with kids being involved in these things, school, education, amen. But the most important thing, amen, is their spirituality and the condition of their young souls. For if you have noticed, amen, they are more apt to get involved in wickedness and evil and sin at an earlier age than when you were growing up. Right? Yeah. So let me move on. Here in our text, amen, verse 5 says, you know what? That that dude distracted by his possession in his house, you know what? Tell him to go home. Go home, go mow the lawn. We don't need him. He's going to affect the other people. Verse 6 says, Also, what man is there that has planted a vineyard and not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house. Let he die in battle, and then, and then another man eat of it. So verse five, talking about position, and verse six, they're kind of, this is referring to occupation. Okay. Here's a man, he has a job, he's a farmer. He has tilled the land, he has planted the seed, he's waiting on the harvest, and his mind is on reaping the rewards of the harvest. Okay, And the Bible says he must be excused from battle. Why? The same reason as verse 5, because his mind, amen, would not be on the battle. He will endanger himself and also endanger those around him. So you know what? You, your mind, amen, is always on work. Come on. How many know many people fit the description? They are often referred to as workaholics. Hmm? Now, I have tremendous respect, all right, for any man who is willing to work. Especially now because our government, our government has set it up that you don't have to work. Right? They made it so easy. Did you know in San Francisco and LA that they pay you to be homeless? 
$600 a month and provide the drugs. And did you know they were putting up, amen, the homeless in San Francisco in the most upscale hotels in that city. And you know what the ironic thing about this? That, that, that they would destroy the rooms and, and they, would, they, they wouldn't stay because they just didn't want to be tied down to anything. Hmm? Millions and millions of dollars, amen, to stay home. So I get it. I, 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 I give men uh, respect to want to work when you don't have to. But you must understand the Christian life must be a balanced life. We need to balance our work, our prayer, our study. Huh? They're important. I get that. But we must make time for them all. But first, Jesus must be first. Uh, I ain't got no strength for that. That's the problem. We spend too much time in one area and we neglect the other. Come on, let's be real. Huh? We were talking about this yesterday on the way to our men's discipleship, or, or, or on the way back. About when I first got saved in, in our mother church down in Oxnard, I, was, I gave the men the schedule we had. We had Monday night prayer, Tuesday night church service, okay? Wednesday, I would go to the men's home and we'd do work there and do Bible studies. We had Friday night service, Saturday usually was outreach, and then Sunday we had Bible study and service. We were in church services almost one, two, three, four times a week. And then going out of town, going out of state, uh, uh, ministry, preaching, and, and plays and all that. I go, now, all you got to do is be in church for an hour and a half on Sunday once a week. And if you can't manage that, Jesus, you need Jesus. You need to be slapped by the Holy Spirit. An hour and a half. It takes you some of you, some of you men that long just to comb your hair that you don't got. Huh? Hello? Before it was the women, now it's the guys. Yeah, now they got plucked their eyebrows. Huh? Shave this, shave that. Man, they put more work into, into themselves than women do now. They look more pretty than women. Beautiful. I don't roll that way, but you know what? Some of them come out and you keep getting too pretty. Men don't want that. I mean, women don't want that. They want a rugged man. Come on, sister, say amen. They want a man that gets his hands dirty. A man that will change the diaper. A man that amen, they'll change the oil. A man that amen, they don't trip on stuff like that. You don't want a man with skinny jeans. Like I said, if you come to this church and you're over 30 and you have skinny jeans, you'll be escorted out. <laughs> imagine, yeah, imagine you coming in skinny jeans. Oh, Lord, that was, yeah, that one doesn't bad. God, man, I get traumatized just thinking about that sight. Let's move on. But we're, some are distracted by their, their occupation, their jobs. Come on. The majority of people I know are willing to give their employer all they have. Amen. Everything, right? Uh huh. Yep. We give them all. How many times they get offered overtime on Sunday? And we say, sure, I need the hours. Thursday comes and the boss needs us. Well, I got to work late. What do we do? We push God to the side and keep on working. Now I get it. In the economy we're living in, we need to do all that we can to get by. But we give God the leftovers. God didn't give us his leftovers. He gave us his best, the Bible says. He gave his only begotten son. Huh? For our lives, for our soul, for our eternity. And here we go, amen, just giving God the leftovers of whatever we have left throughout the week. Come on. But throughout the day, right? Well, you know, I'm tired. Uh, here I am, Jesus. Thank you for the bike. That's it. No, we need to get up early. The Bible says get up early and seek God early, the Bible says. Huh? So you be in your word. Study it. Now, if anything, if you have struggle in reading the Bible, at least come to church so you can at least hear it and follow along as you read it. 
For some, this is the only intake of the scriptures you have for the week. Nobody said amen, so nobody wants to admit to that one. Hmm? Yeah. Someone I was reading about, Tom Landry. Remember Tom Landry? He was a Dallas Cowboys head coach for many years. Did you know he was a Christian? He was a believer? And they asked him, what, uh, you know, how did he become successful? What was basically, you know, uh, the formula for your success? And he's, he's quoted by saying, in 1958, I did something everyone who had been successful must do. I determined my priorities for my life. He says, God, family, football. No? And he was a su successful coach, wasn't he? I hated that team, but I got to give them their props. They beat my Raiders a lot. Pray for where I don't even know where the Raiders are living now. Vegas? Yeah. Pretty soon they're going to be in Fresno. Vegas. They're playing like they're from Tulare. Yeah, I can say that because they're, they're my family. They're my, I'm a Raider Nation guy. But, yeah. but anyway, but, see, I got distracted by the Raiders right now. The Bible says, and I quoted earlier, let me move on here, is that, you know, where your treasure is, that where your heart will be also, right? The Bible says also not to lay up treasures on earth, but in heaven. We have it opposite, though. We want to lay up treasures down here. Instead of focusing on God, you know, this is what I need to live on this earth comfortably. Define comfortable, right? But we want to lay up treasures here. No, the Bible says lay them up in heaven. That, that would pass over your head. Pray about that one. Okay. In the book of Timothy, Paul told Timothy, his young disciple, and also a young Pastor, he says, Timothy, it says in 2 Timothy 2 4, no man that warreth that's in war will entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Okay. It says, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Because how many know it's so easy for you and I to entangle and be distracted by the things of this life? It doesn't take much. So we are distracted by possessions, we are distracted by occupation, and thirdly, we are distracted by, here we go, relationships. Verse 7, and what man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Go home. <laughs> He's going to die. Paraphrasing that. <laughs> oh, Lord, here we go. Some are distracted because of relationships. How many married couples here did not come to church because you were fighting over here with Mr. Brother Feedman? Huh? Superman there. I ain't going to church. I just not going because you know what? He says something to me and he's acting wrong. She's not going, I'm not going. Come on, have you been distracted by that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Here the Bible talks about a man that was engaged. Okay, betrothed means, you know, he's engaged. And go further into the study, it, it, it also means also someone who's newly wed. Because let me know when you're first on your honeymoon, you don't want to separate. You guys are like conjoint twins. Come on. You don't want to leave each other's side. No? Wow. You need to teach on marriage now. Huh? Some are distracted by relationships. Come on. And, and I, hey. We all know too well of this subject for us that have relationships. If you are single right now, enjoy your singleness. Okay. No accountability to no fool. Huh? No accountability to a mouth. You get how you got to put the man's a fool and the woman's a mouth? You are your old person. You can enjoy. You don't have to pick up after yourself. You can eat whatever you want. Amen. It is just you and that's it. Well, enjoy your singleness because there will come a time, amen, when you hit that wall and you'll fall in love. <laughs> or you're distracted because you fell out of love. It's a distraction nevertheless. Whether you're together or you're not, right? 
So here, the Bible says, you know what? This dude, he's, he's engaged or he just got married. You know what? His mind's going to be on love. He's going to be distracted. He's going to affect us. Come on, think about it. Hey, where's brother so-and-so? He's supposed to have guard and watch. What is yet? Uh, he's over there tripping by the tree because his girl didn't text him back. Right? Uh, he got a Dear John letter or a Dear Juan letter. You know what a Dear Juan letter is? Huh? Yeah, I got one before Joe. Okay. It says, Dear Eddie, uh, court, uh, unfortunately, the circumstances have come to to surface that I have realized that you are not the Juan for me. <laughs> Juan, get it? Juan. I made that up. I didn't get it from anybody. I made it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. You know what the most is with the most. You know, being. Having workers, when I do work and handing that work and I get guys to work for me and all that, one of the, one of the great distractions I've seen is guys on the phone. I, 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 let go already, man. You've only gone 30 minutes. She can't even miss you yet, man. He, every, like working on the phone, like, then FaceTiming even. Huh? Distracted. You're not good for the battle. You're not good for the work, man. Just go home and go over there and go do what you do, man. Get out of here already. Well, I remember years ago, I had someone working with me, and they were distracted, and they were whatever. And it was hard work what we were doing. I had a few guys in me, and I could tell that something was on his mind. His mind was somewhere else. So around noon, he walks up to the pasture, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking off. What? You ain't got a ride. I can't leave. I can't even get a ride back. Oh, no. <laughs> I already done got a ride. Someone's going to pick me up. I said, but I got all this work. You're just going to leave me hey, You know, I just can't. I know I'm in my mind somewhere else. Huh? So he just walked away kicking rocks. I was down. Man. Yeah. Distraction. People will get distracted. They'll, they will leave good paying jobs. Like you just walk off a $20, $30 an hour job because you're distracted by homegirl, by him, by that, by family, by this, relationship. I mean, no way, man. Hey, come on. <laughs> I don't care how bad I am at my wife or how mad, mad, uh, mad she can be at me. I got to take care of business. Yeah, there's always mom. Okay, go back home. This guy in verse 7 was excused from the battle because... He would probably affect everyone around him. Though, how many know relationships will affect not only the person, but everybody around them? Now, family is important. I get that. Okay. But man, sometimes they are a hindrance to the cause of Christ in your life. We can be influenced for the good or for the worse. I thank God that my family and my sister, she influenced me for the good. Okay. She wasn't distracted. What was going on in her life? Enough to pray for me and to invite me to church and to take me to church and to work with me, her and her husband, amen, and to take me to the men's home. They weren't, I'm sure she had problems at home. I'm sure she had issues with whatever, but she wasn't distracted enough not to work with me and get me to that men's home. But now, I mean, we, we have problems with relationship. We don't want to talk to no one about Jesus. In fact, we doubt Jesus at all. Huh? Let me move on. So if it's not possessions that distract us, if it's not work, occupation, if it's not relationship, it's something more personal. Verse 8, the officers shall speak further to the people and say, what man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. Some are distracted simply by fear. Come on. They say, you know what? You know, your spirit and your cowardness is going to affect all the men around here. Go home. Coward, stay home. And I'm not trying to be derogatory here, but what I'm talking about that, let me tell you something. The things of God, involvement and ministry, purpose, calling, they are, fear, they are there's fear there when God is calling us to rise up. Huh? Benjamin has called you into the ministry, whether it's preaching, Becoming a couple and, and, and pastoring, it will cause men to run in fear. Huh? 
I have seen it year after year. I've been here 20 years. And people that are called, you know, you challenge them, you know they got a calling. Hello? Hey, you know, God, I know God wants to use you in this area. Huh? They run off, amen, like a scared rabbit. It's, I get it. It's fearful. When I was when I got involved for the first time, I was scared, and I've been through a lot. A lot of them got killed on the streets, stabbed, shot at. Come on, beaten, left for dead, hit by cars, jumped out of cars. Hello. <laughs> well, you know, you men know about that one. Fight with the girl. I'm out of here. You jump out of the car. Crazy. <laughs> That's foolish. Don't do that more than once. <laughs> Hello. I jumped out on my own car because a demon were after me in the car. The meth monsters, remember those? I jumped out of the car. Crashed into a pole. The car did, not me. I jumped out. Huh? But fear. I know, I understand. It was the most, like I said, I've been through all that in my life. Then when it came, you know, for me to be involved in ministry and to get into the front lines in battle, in ministry, and ushering, and, and Bible studies, and outreach, and all the things that we do, amen, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie, I was fearful because it was something new, I mean, it was it was God's work, and it's fearful, right? I knew God would put me on the front line, amen. I knew I had to be accountable, responsible, that people depended on me and the ministry that I was involved in. It is fearful. Huh? Yeah. But with God, all things are possible. Huh? You remember, in fact, Pastor Charlie talked about this yesterday in our men's discipleship. Gideon's army, remember that? God called him into ministry, into warring the enemy, right? Against the Midianites. He was a scaredy cat. He was fearful. Okay. He didn't want to go and fight. He didn't want to lead. But God commanded him. And so what ended up happening? Why need men? So the Bible says, amen, that there was 32,000 men at his disposal. But God said, you know what? Uh, God knew the heart of them. Said, you know what? 30, they're not all with you. So the number dropped to 10,000. Okay. God said, nah, you know what? There's still some people there. They're just fearful and they're distracted. Okay. We're going to drop this number to 300. Remember that? And the, and the way they determined who would be the 300 is he says, look at what I want you to do before they chose the 300. He goes, I want you to get all these men, go to the riverbank and have them go ahead and drink water. So they all went to the riverbank, thousands of them. And he says, now the ones that drink the water, they kneel down, they get the water and they bring the water up to them. Those are the ones you want to choose to fight with you in this battle. So only 300 out of 10,000 got the water, they got it on their knees and they laughed and they drank. Keeping, they were keeping point. As the other ones were so thirsty, they got all my on the right? He says, those 300 are the ones that are going to fight with you, Gideon. Okay? That got me thinking. Why did those 300 do that? I guarantee when it came to, you know, boot camp, military school, that they taught them how to drink water at the river. And those men were paying attention. They weren't distracted. They listened to the instructor. All right. This is how you do it because we've got to keep point all the time. The other ones were distracted with the girl. They were distracted with work. I guarantee you why they were in school. You got any dropouts here? I guarantee you dropped out because you were distracted. Hello? Nobody want to say, no, no, no. who wants to admit that they were dropouts? Really, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll admit that. I'm a dropout. <laughs> You didn't get my point. You think we drop out because we're not paying attention. Right? You remember when we went to school? You weren't paying attention? They gave you everything. You know what? You're going to continuation. Take crap. You, you didn't pay attention there, then you went to Gateway. Right? With the barbed wire. Hello? Before you knew it, you just dropped out completely because you were distracted. You weren't paying attention. All right? You could not be good for anything. And there we go back to the streets, out to the streets, right? See, here, and I'll bring this to a close, is God said, you know what? You don't need to be fearful. Because in verse 4, what did he say? For the Lord your God is, I'm going with you. I'm going to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The victory has already been won. You just got to get involved and go to the front line. 
All you gotta do, amen, is lace up your boots, amen, put on your the helmet of salvation, put on the armor of God. The victory has been assured. Hello? But fear, cowardice, apathy, slothfulness, sin will distract you and I from our true calling on this earth. Hmm? With that, the, we are fighting a battle, yes, but the victory has already been secured. Hmm? But these other ones that we talked about, they had to be excused from the battlefield. And it's sad when you got good men and women in the house of God that have the potential and the talents and the gifts to be in the front lines and make an impact you know what, like never before in our city, in their homes, in their lives, amen. They can do so great exploits in the kingdom of God, but they are simply distracted. Their mind, amen, is on other things. Well, Pastor Eddie, yeah, but you don't understand. If, you, if someone tells me I don't understand, I am going to put my spiritual stripes down and slap you. I'm going to take my white collar off and hit you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't. I do understand. I understand about fa family problems. I understand about separation and divorce. I understand about troubled kids. I understand about financial instability. I understand about sickness. I understand about debt. I, I, I kind of, you know, me and my wife, unfortunately, have been around, done some things, and seen things, and experienced things. So, for the most part, we do understand most things that go on in the lives of people. Okay. So, you know, you cannot use that anymore, that you don't want to understand. No, God understands more importantly. Hmm? And verse 9 at the end here says, And it shall be when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. Once they got all those with excuses out of the way, then they select the leaders for the army. So this morning, are you a coward or are you a captain? There's a battle to fight. Are you ready for battle? Are you, re are you ready to ignore distraction on the battlefield? Huh? Because we are fighting a real battle. It's not worse, church. All right? Hey, we're under attack, especially in the state of California. We got all these crazy and wicked and evil laws come into play. Their legislation. Come on. Pretty soon, this state is going to be running a month more than ever before. And the church, amen, is the one that's going to be hit first. They want to take out every Christian and anyone that believes in God, family, and country. And they're going after your kids. It starts with them. They don't even fight fair. Hello? So don't let nothing distract you. Get in the battlefield, front lines this morning. This bar heads today.